So, the college football off the radar pick 'em for week number nine. And we are going to start this off with a 12 p.m. game, 12 p.m. Eastern time on the ACC network, Miami. The Hurricanes go to Pittsburgh, both teams coming off of major wins last week. Miami, of course, beat NC State by one point. Pitt beat Clemson by 10 at home. And in Miami is headed to Heinz Field. Pitt, a nine and a half point favorite, total of 61. Odds brought to you by BetUS, where the game begins. Go ahead and click the link in the description. Make sure you get signed up and use that promo code that's down there. Miami won this game 31 to 19 last year. They are five and one straight up and against the spread in the last six. Miami seven and one straight up their last eight at Pitt. Uh, however, Pitt this season playing completely different. They are seven and one against the spread in their last eight games. And you look at their numbers, and Chris, as a like just power rating, Pitt is a top 10 team right now. Uh, this line opened at 11. It has dropped down to 9.5. My number on this was actually Pitt minus 12. I, you know, But I looked at it, and I was like, man, Miami's been playing a whole lot better here lately. I, I really wanted to go Miami here because Tyler Van Dyke has been good. But this Pitt defense has been playing insanely well. Pitt has figured out how to run the football. And Kenny Pickett is like a jack-of-all-trades, man. Like, Not only can he throw the football... But this guy can run anything that you need him to. He's in like year th- what year three or four with the offensive coordinator Mark Whipple, and when you've got experienced guys like this that understand how to run basically everything, you don't have to just stick with the stuff that you're good at. You can be good at everything. So I I think I'm I'm going to change my pick right now, and I'm actually going to go with Pitt minus nine and a half here. I might feel like an idiot on on Saturday morning because Miami has been playing better. But I think Pitt is just the overall, I mean, just significantly better football team. What uh, what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, I'm with you. I, I like Pitt. I like Pitt minus the nine and a half. I don't. I'm not. I don't think Miami is what we saw last week. I just, I just don't. I mean, they so they they played two within three of North Carolina, but they also gave up like 45 points to North Carolina last week. Some NC State, you know, mistakes actually maybe cost them that game. Uh, otherwise, Miami would be. You know, but they have played close games since uh, since Tyler Van Dyke took over. So I am kind of curious about that. Uh, but I, I do think that Pitt is significantly better. I did not say this beforehand. Meant to our records uh, last week. I went six and six. Chris went three and nine. I am sitting at forty one and forty three on the season. Chris is thirty three and fifty one. Uh, you can find the picks over on the website. Uh, just click on where it says picks. Very easy. So winningcureseverything dot com slash picks. Let's see game number two here. And my brother, this. This might be where it all falls apart. I We're going 3 p.m., FS1, Washington State at Arizona State. Arizona State is now a 16-point favorite over the Cougars. Total of 53. Washington State 5-0 and against the spread of their last five. Uh, Arizona State 5-0 and against the spread of their last five at home against Washington State. So, this if you look at the numbers, it, no, Washington State should not be able to hang in this game. But this is a team that, for whatever reason, has hung in there week after week after week. Did they put everything on the line last week against BYU, and now they got nothing left in the tank when they go on the road to uh, to the Sun Devils? That's that's the question here. I like Jaden Delara. I think he's going to be able to throw the football a little bit on Arizona State's defense. I this it feels like a coin flip, right? Like I, I just I don't think that that Arizona State is like they're not the one that has an issue right now. Even though they're the one that had the issue to start the season, Washington State has to figure out how to win without their head coach and multiple assistants. But they did okay last week against BYU, and BYU kind of you know they they beat Arizona State. I don't know that they uh, demolished them or anything, but but they beat Arizona State earlier in the season. Uh, the biggest question here is. You know, uh, Arizona State is number seventy-five in de- uh, passing defense success rate. I, I don't know what to make of this. I think that Washington State could hang in this thing. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to roll Washington State plus sixteen. I, I don't think that this falls off this week just because they're playing a good team on the road. I think Washington State is actually just a pretty competent football team. You might be right. I'm going to die on this hill though that I, I think at some point in time the wheels got to fall off. At some point in time, coaching has to matter. And if it doesn't matter, then what the hell these coaches making some of the money? So, 
that you know, I just need to know what we're doing here, and and I'm I'm going to go with Washington. I mean, not Washington State, Arizona State. I just think they're the better football team. I think they're making this number really big because they want people to be all over them. Yeah, I can I can understand that. I can understand that. So I uh, I might be the one that uh, that falls on this sword. So so I'll take Washington State. You will take Arizona State. Three thirty p.m. Eastern Time. We are going to ESPN two, and Purdue is headed to Nebraska. The Cornhuskers are a seven and a half point favorite. Total of fifty two and a half. Nebraska five and two against the spread in their last seven games. Uh, in the last three games. Nebraska's offense and defense have been significantly better than Purdue. Everybody, you know, it started to kind of hype up Purdue a little bit because they got that big win over Iowa. But when you really sit back and look at the numbers, the win over Iowa was impressive, but also maybe should have been expected. I don't know what that necessarily says here. Last week, Purdue just got steamrolled by Wisconsin. Nebraska has the dudes to be able to do the same thing. The question is, is Purdue going to be able to stop the run enough to make Adrian Martinez make a mistake here? And I I don't think so. I think that this one looks a little closer to uh, maybe Notre Dame against Purdue. That was a 27-13 uh, to 13 game. I, I kind of lean Nebraska here, even, even with the hook. I'll, I'll take the Cornhuskers minus 7.5. I think, I think this is much more what Nebraska did to Northwestern. Now, Purdue is not as bad as Northwestern, uh, but Nebraska beat them 56-7, to and and they once they started, they just never stopped. Like, they figured out what worked against them and, and kept doing it. I think Purdue could fall into the same situation here. Man, I, I hate this game, and I hate this one. I, give me <laughs> Purdue. At, see, that's, that's the way that I wanted to go until I started digging into stuff, and I was like, God... No, I think you're probably right, but I'll take the starting point. I mean, it's, I, I, it's so I hard. Is it's a close game. Like it's so hard to bet on Adrian Martinez because you know he's going to do something at some point that that could cost yeah. him the game. Like, I don't want to lay more than a touchdown with Adrian. That's how I feel. That's how I feel about it. So just just ridiculous, just ridiculous. All right, so that'll move us to four p.m. And we are moving back to the ACC Network. We got a lot of ACC Network games this week. Duke is headed to Wake Forest. Now bring up Wake Forest because, of course, uh, they, they could be a playoff sleeper for us very, very soon. But this game can sometimes be a little tricky. And whenever you have a team that hangs 70 points, uh, especially on one of the service academies, it, there's going to be a lot of love for that team coming in the next week. Uh, this line is sitting at 16 uh, before the season. This is, so there are multiple sports books out there that have uh, preseason lines and all that. This was one of those, you know, game of the year, whatever kind of lines. Wake Forest was favored over Duke by like 10 points. And now that we have gotten through the season, now they are favored by 16 uh, with a total of 70. Duke is coming off of a bye here. Duke is 4-1 and one straight up and against the spread their last four, or sorry, last five at, at Wake Forest, like on the road there. However... Wake Forest is three and one straight up and against the spread their last four overall against Duke. I I think all the hype and everything uh, is not unfounded. This Wake offense with Sam Hartman is rolling right now. I don't see any number that would lead me to think that Duke will be able to keep this thing close. I think Wake Forest wins this by three touchdowns because Duke has actually gotten worse. They were able to score early in the season. But they have gotten worse as the season has gone along. Their last game out, they lost to Virginia 48 to nothing. I think this game could be closer to that as opposed to a tight ball game. So I'm, I'm going to take Wake Forest here. Yes, Wake Forest is going to kill them. This, is, this Wake Forest offense is really, really special. Yes. Uh, again, you've got a team that is really experienced. And, and knows a certain type of play. You know how Jamie Chadwell is known for like uh, his very unique offense? Well, the claw fence is kind of the same thing. Very much the same thing. So I'm, uh, I'm with you. We're both going to roll wake on that one. Now, next game on the board, 7 p.m., CBS Sports Network. Boise State heads to Colorado State, and the Rams are a two-and-a-half-point underdog at home, total of 51 and a half. Colorado State four and one against the spread their last five games this season. Uh, Boise is five and zero straight up their last five against Colorado State. 
But we know that this is not exactly the same Boise State team. Andy Avalos in his first season, uh, you look at some of these numbers, like they are they are not good at running the football. They are not good at stopping the run. If you look on offense, Boise is number 104 in EPA per rush. That is not a Boise State football team. And if you look over on uh, on the other side, they are number 81 in EPA per rush on defense. So this they are not good at the line of scrimmage. Just bottom line. Uh, Colorado State is good, man. Like they, Their numbers uh, on defense have been shocking. Absolutely shocking. I don't know that Boise can can really score a lot here. They're going to rely on special teams and whatnot, but I don't know that they have much of an advantage there. The only advantage that they got is that Steve Adazio might do something stupid late in the ball game. Like that's the biggest advantage. I'm I'm gonna this line kind of stinks to me uh, because you would expect Boise to be favored by significantly more. But man, I actually had Colorado State as a favorite in this game just based on the numbers. So I'm I'm gonna ride Colorado State plus the two and a half here. Yeah, no, I'm going to take Boise. I'm going to take Boise. I've bet against Boise a couple of times this year. They, they they have not been impressive, but I think I think they've got enough to to win this game and they cover the short number. Uh, one thing that could bite me on this is this is a massive game for Colorado State, just brand wise. And sometimes they can teams can put a little bit too much pressure on themselves in situations like this. So that could that could end up costing me. 7 p.m. on the SEC Network. Kentucky goes to Starkville, Mississippi. The Mississippi State Bulldogs are a one and a half point underdog at home. Total of forty seven. Uh, State five and zero oh straight up the last five times that Kentucky has come down to Starkville. Kentucky has not beaten them in Starkville since two thousand eight. Two thousand eight, man. Uh, but this is not exactly you know when we were in high school or whatever. It, it's not the same kind of Kentucky football team. Kentucky is six and one against the spread so far this year, and. While it is scary to go to Starkville, uh, when I look at some of these numbers, I one and a half seemed low. My line on this was Kentucky minus four, and I immediately started thinking, man, I might need to take State here. And if you look at it just across the board, defense, offense, everything else, as far as success rate goes, Mississippi State has been really successful. But I think, I think Kentucky's one of those teams that just finds a way to win no matter what. I'm I'm going to ride Kentucky minus the one and a half. I might end up hating myself come Saturday night, but I think Kentucky is is the better football team. I'm going to take them to win by by more than one and a half points here. What are, what are your thoughts on the Bulldogs and the Wildcats here? Uh, I don't like this game either, but give me the Bulldogs at home. Um, I'm catching a little bit of a point, and I, I got the home team. And this Mississippi State team has done some special things this year uh, with their back up against the wall. So, you know, I like Kentucky. I think Kentucky is really good. I also think Kentucky is due for a downfall. Doesn't this seem like the, the NC State at Mississippi State game earlier in the season? Yep. Where, you know, State coming off a, a piss-poor performance and everybody just assumes, oh, NC State's going to come in here and kill them and, and whatever, and State ends up kind of dominating the football game. I... Like, I, I got to trust my numbers. I got to trust my process here. That's why I'm rolling Kentucky. But, man, I could 100% see State coming out with a win here. This 3-3-5 defense that Zach Arnett runs is no joke. And and I don't think Kentucky's seen anything like it thus far this season. So, that could be that could be interesting. 7.30 p.m. on the ACC Network. We have got Louisville headed to NC State. The Wolfpack, of course, coming off of a loss. Uh, Louisville has been playing way better as of late. They are 4-1. and one. Uh, yep. Against the spread in their last five games, and and you called it last week against Boston College. You say like Louisville's been playing better. I trust them more in this spot. You were right. You were one hundred percent right. Total is fifty six and a half here, brother. I'm I'm going to join the bandwagon. Like I, Louisville is is impressing me big time here. Uh, the fact that I'm getting a touchdown, like this feels absolutely like a field goal game here. And I, you know, the fact that it's in Raleigh gave me a little bit of pause, but. This Louisville defense is is what is surprising to me, and I don't trust NC State's offense. So I'm I'm going to roll with Louisville here to be able to to cover this number uh, because I I don't I don't think NC State's offense is very good at all. Uh, what are what are your thoughts? <sighs> so I do think NC State's offense is pretty good still. I like this NC State team. I think what happened last week is an anomaly. I think they played a bad game. I think Miami played a great game. That's that's a different situation. 
Do I think they'll beat Louisville by a touchdown? I, I think I'd take the touchdown head start because I like Louisville. I think NC State still wins the game, but I think it could be close. That's, that's my thought. That's my biggest problem with NC State is is not being able to finish drives, right? And, and on top of that, like on offense, they are number seventy eight in EPA per pass. They are number eighty three in EPA per rush. Their echo rate, which is uh, successful drives, is number eighty in the country. Like I, I just don't, I don't trust them to be able to finish a lot. So while I do think the offense can move the football, I also. I mean, it, it, I do I do really like NC State's defense. So let me say something positive about them. Uh, I just think that this feels like a field goal game, maybe a, a 31-27 kind of game one way or the other. So I will, I will certainly ride with Louisville with you. Next game up is a 10 p.m. game, and we got multiple late-nighters on, on the off-the-radar slate this week. And we are going to ride with UCLA at Utah, ESPN game. Both teams already three losses on the season. That could be uh, interesting because uh, one of these will have four losses before November. I don't know that anybody expected that. Uh, UCLA five and one against the spread of their last six. Or sorry, Utah five and one against the spread of their last six against UCLA. Uh, but UCLA, they are five and zero oh against the number on the road this season. That kind of surprised me. Kind of surprised me. I I look at these numbers here, and Utah is supposed to be good against the run. But I don't know that they are because last week they got demolished by Oregon State. Both of these teams can run the football. I think the biggest key to this game is going to be whether or not Cam Rising uh, can throw on a weak UCLA secondary. If they can, I don't know that UCLA can score enough to keep up with them, and that could be interesting. So I I don't like the 6.5. I think it might be a touch too much, but I do still think that Utah is the significantly better team, and playing in Salt Lake City is rough, man. So I'm I'm going to take Utah to cover six and a half here. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go the other way. I'm gonna take UCLA. I think they can I think they can win the game. So if I'm getting almost a touchdown head start, I'm gonna play them. I think they play close games. I think they I think both these teams play ugly games all the time. So I don't I don't feel safe with either one of them laying that big of a number to anybody right now. Yeah, I can uh, I can trust that. There's there's just a lot of questions about both of these teams, right? Yeah, DTR, I I believe he's going to play. Like he should be fine. He he missed the end of the Oregon game, and which was a damn shame. We talked about it on the reaction show on Sunday. But he, I mean, he played his heart out in that ball game. He put everything he had out there. Can he do it two weeks in a row? Like that's that's what we'll find out. And he's he's kind of done it all season, man. He he's a really gutsy kid. Next game up, we got uh, three more here, and let's move to ESPN 2, 10.15 p.m., Virginia at BYU, Bronco Mendenhall's return. 64.5 is the total. BYU is favored now by three points. Uh, Virginia, 4-1 and one against the number in their last five games. BYU has kind of dropped off a little bit as of late. Uh, you start digging through some of these numbers, Virginia's defense not great. They are number 115 in EPA per play. BYU, same kind of thing here. They are number 90 in EPA per play on defense. So you got two bottom, you know, bottom 40 teams uh, on defense. Not great. However, the offenses, uh, really good. Like really, really good. Virginia's offense, number seven in EPA per play. And BYU, number 25 in EPA per play. Uh, BYU at home, like this is a rough spot to play in for Virginia. Because we all know that playing in Provo was difficult. I mean, just ask Arizona State. Just ask Utah. Just ask, you know, all these other teams. The question is, though, I don't know that I don't know that BYU has had to play uh, a passing offense like this, right? I, I don't think anybody has been quite as successful. You know, I, we talked a little bit earlier in the preview about Virginia and, and Bronco Mendenhall completely swapping his offensive philosophy three years ago when he had Bryce Perkins at quarterback they were running the ball at, you know, 62% of the time, whatever it was. And now they're passing the ball like 61% of the time. That's that's a huge, huge shift. And I I know that they are at home. And I know that everybody likes BYU and, and everything else because this line was at 2.5. It's moved up to 3 now. I kind of like Virginia. I don't know that BYU if, – if Virginia starts to throw the football – because BYU on, on passing defense – I mean, they're number 79 in EPA per pass. Like, Virginia is going to eat them alive. So if they can't find a way to slow down Brennan Armstrong, 
I don't think there's any way that they can score enough points. Like to me, this was a pick 'em. The fact that I've got a three point head start here, I think Virginia can absolutely win the game outright. So I'm going to take Virginia to to cover the three here. Yeah, this is another game that I'm super interested in, but I don't want to bet at all. Uh, I don't like this number. I, I have been betting BYU like crazy all year long. Early on, I made a lot of money off of them. I've lost a ton the last four, I think. I'm going to go back to them, though. I mean, I'm, I'm going to go back to them just because at some point in time, they're going to they're going to look more like the team that look they look like at the beginning of the season. And maybe they won't. Maybe they won't. Maybe this is who they are, and that was all fraudulent. But I just feel like they might have something in store for their old coach. Maybe they don't. Maybe maybe Bronco goes back. Maybe Hugh comes back. Told this. I mean, you know. Maybe these returning coaches just just find ways to get wins. It's entirely possible. I mean, what we we're kind of used to. What's the kid's name? Algier, the running back. I mean, it, it, he's the one that made the uh, the Superman move early in the season. They were dominating yeah. people in the trenches early. Virginia is somebody that you can push around when you're on offense and they're on defense. BYU number forty six in EPA per rush. Virginia's defense number one seventeen. Like they cannot stop people from running uh, running the football. Uh, so that would be the way that BYU could do it. This. Man, the total is 60, 64 and a half now. It came up from 63. Like this thing could get really pointy. So you're you're going to roll BYU. I'm going to take West or I'm going to take uh, Virginia plus 3. We got two more here. Let's go ahead and knock them out right quick. Another late night game. 10:30 p.m. CBS Sports Network Fresno State against San Diego State. I didn't write down any trends. I didn't write down anything like that. My biggest problem here is San Diego State. As much as I love this team, they have not faced a team that is competent throwing the football thus far this season, and Fresno State is more than competent. Uh, they are really, really good throwing the football. They're number number 36 in EPA per pass. Now, San Diego State is number two in EPA per pass on defense, but it, you go and look at who they played, and there's nobody that can sling it. And that's that's where we try and figure out. The closest thing that they've played to Fresno State was New Mexico State. Like... <laughs> I mean, we're not even we're not even talking in the same sport. It feels like so I'm, you know, San Diego State is favored by one here, but man, I I might I know it's on the road. I might have to roll Fresno here. There is, yeah, that's that's what I'm gonna do. That's what I'm gonna do. I think Fresno's defense is a little bit undervalued. I think Fresno might end up being the better football team. So I'll I'll take the Bulldogs uh, plus one at San Diego State. Like I want San Diego State to go undefeated. I want you know I want good things for that program. But I think Fresno is a really good team, man. And, and you give me a point here, I'll I'll take it. Well, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go San Diego State. I want them to go undefeated. I want to see them have a special season. I like both these programs. There's a reason I said this has a chance to be the most exciting game of the weekend. I do think it has a chance to be the most exciting game of the weekend. And 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 I'm hoping for that. But at the same time, I, I if I got if everything I wanted, I, I would want to see San Diego State pull this thing off. And yeah, yeah, I could uh, I could totally see that. I could totally see that. If you look at EPA per play, there is such a seismic shift between these two. <laughs> San Diego State's defense is number two in the country, and their offense is number one hundred and one. Like you were talking ninety nine spots between their offense and their defense. I mean, it is crazy. I, I love to see teams win with defense, but I'm going to go the opposite way here. I just, it, it, because of my my thoughts on the game here uh, over the past however many years, I, I think I'm going to have to go with the better offense here. Last game on the board before we let you get out of here and, and I get out of here and we all, you know, go back to what we're doing and having a fantastic weekend. 3.30 p.m. game on Fox, Colorado at Oregon. Obviously, we don't have to spend long on this one. Oregon, a 24-point favorite, total of 49 the Ducks seven and one against the spread. Their last eight against Colorado. Uh, Colorado two and six against the number in their last eight on the road. The reason I brought this one up is because I cannot believe that Oregon would be favored by twenty four points over anybody right now. At this team, as as good as they looked against UCLA, it is blatantly obvious to me that this team plays down to the level of competition. And and while Colorado is not a good football team. I don't know how you could take Oregon because I don't know that they will necessarily score 24 points in this ball game. What uh, what are your thoughts here? Uh, I agree. I agree completely. I, I I can't trust Oregon. I can't trust Oregon at all. And uh, and and I would take 
all those points. I don't think Colorado is a good football team. But I, can they slow the game down and can they keep it tight? I think so. I think so, absolutely. And and another play here might be might be the under. I mean, this total is forty nine. Like I, I'd certainly, you know, I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put it on our sheet because obviously we're just picking against the spread. That's what pick'em is. But man, I mean, forty nine. I don't. It, Colorado may not score. Like this might just be like a twenty to nothing ball game. You know, <laughs> their yeah. uh, their offense is putrid, man. They are uh, they are number one twenty seven in the country in EPA per play margin on offense. I mean, that is that is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, but their defense ain't bad. Defense is number 41. So, you know, they slow this thing down. You maybe get a broken play here or there. You can find a way to stay within this 24 pretty easy. So I will uh, I will take them there. You're going to do the same. Uh, anything else that you want to hit on before we close this thing out? No, man, I think that's it. Sounds like a plan. All right, I'm going to let you get out of here. I will wrap up this show, and we will have a banger of a weekend. Tell everybody, again, where to find the SBR College Football Show on Saturday morning. Yeah, you got to go to SBR pick, uh, Sports Pick on Twitter right now. It's going to be streaming live, 9 a.m. Central Time, 10 a.m. Eastern. Go there, check us out. Give me some give me some views. I appreciate it. And uh, you can find me on Twitter at Chris B. Giannini. There you go. All right, brother. I will. Uh, I will talk to you later on. See you, man. Holla. All right. So that was Chris. Fantastic, fantastic picks again this weekend. Uh, we are looking forward to a fun weekend of college football. Of course, it's Halloween weekend. Something stupid, something crazy is going to happen. I will guarantee it. Guarantee. So with that said, let's go ahead and get out of here. We've been here for uh, a little over an hour. We appreciate you guys for watching the show. If you would, go ahead and hit that like button for us. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel and uh, tell your friends about it. Share the show out. Of course, jump into the comments. We want to hear your picks for the weekend, of course. Uh, If you want to hear the other games, the reason we do off-the-radar picks is because we discuss on our college football shows for BetUS and Sportsbook Review, uh, we discuss the other big games. We discuss a ton of other games. Uh, We try and hit as many games a week as we possibly can, give you an idea of where we're leaning. This is not exactly our official plays. Like, this isn't our official picks for the week. You can find those on the other shows. But we we like to do a pick-em for the games that maybe aren't getting... Uh, a lot of the love nationally. So we want to hit on some of those as well. With that said, we're going to go ahead and, and get out of here. Go to winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe where you need to subscribe. Go to BetUS, where the game begins. They bring you the show every time out. Uh, you can sign up using the promo code NCAAF2021, and you will get 125% deposit bonus up to, oh my gosh, what was it? Up to 125% deposit bonus up to $2,500. There we go. I got it. It's right there. It's also down in the description, so you can check that out as well. But click that link down there. It's going to automatically toss in that promo code. Very easy to do. So go over to betus.com, where the game begins, and make sure and check out our college football shows. Like I just said, there's a link in the description for those as well. Let's get out of here. It's been a long week. Hopefully you've had a fantastic week. Hopefully your Friday and Saturdays are awesome. We will be back with you on Sunday for the College Football Reaction Show it should be a lot of fun this go round because we have some big time games this weekend that have a lot of implications on the rest of the season. So hopefully you'll join us then, 9.30 a.m. Central Time on Sunday morning so that we can hash out exactly what the hell happened in this crazy sport. With that said, let's dive out. You guys take care of yourself, take care of each other, and hopefully all of your tickets cash this week. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.